congratulations on being inducted into the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. It's an incredible honor. Yeah, well, I'm glad to welcome you to it. Uh, you've been involved in the sport uh, for a long time, Rod, and uh, during your career, who was the greatest influence on your life in the sport of wrestling? Well, that, that's always a hard question because you have so many people that come from so many different areas to influence you in the sport. But um, I guess it, it's, it always goes back to the beginning. You know, your high school coach that gets you involved and has the faith in you and puts you out there on the mat and says, go get him. And so uh, I think um, Bob Haywood was my high school coach. And I think uh, in terms of influence, he was the first influence, but I, uh, Dick Trimmer was a big influence on me also, and he was my college coach at Chico. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, did you have any wrestling idols growing up in the sport? Well, uh, when I was growing up, we had a lot of high school kids that were, that were pretty good in my team. And so uh, I used to marvel at some of these guys and how good they were in their, mm -hmm. their physicalness. And, and uh, I was kind of a skinny little kid that didn't mature till later. and so. Um, I think uh, in terms of, uh, I wasn't too much, in, I didn't have a lot of knowledge about, you know, the college wrestling scene or the Olympic wrestling scene, just had heard some names and that kind of a thing. But uh, of course, when I got into college, the big, uh, I was in Division Two, and so right. the big name was uh, Vaughn Hitchcock coaching over right. there in, in Cal Poly, and actually he went, coached at Castor Valley High School, which is where I graduated, and had yeah. left there. and so. Uh, quite a history of, of wrestling at Castor Valley yes. in that time in the 60s in there when I was going to school there. So um, those guys really made an impression on, on me. Oh, I bet. Yeah. What got you started in the sport? You know what got me started in the sport is PE class. Okay. I was, um, as a sophomore, not a freshman, as a sophomore, I was five foot one and 95 pounds. So as a freshman, I loved sports, but I couldn't get into, I couldn't do anything. I, I loved baseball, I loved football and all kinds of sports, but I wasn't big enough to do any of it, and I was in a large school. So I ran cross country just to do, okay. compete. And then in PE class, we had PE wrestling. And then I realized that wrestling wasn't just about getting some big guy to jump on you on the lawn and rub your face in the dirt. That's what wrestling was to me before I got into PE. And then when I realized that I can compete with kids my own size, that turned me on because that got me a chance to be an athlete against people that I could compete with. Mm -hmm. So right away, that's, that's what did it for me. You like that level playing field. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, it gave me a chance, you know. I, um, and I had some success in PE. I, was, I could beat guys in my PE class, so I said, I'll go out for the team. <laughs> so I went out next year, the next year for the team. Uh, Rod, you spent literally almost your whole life in the sport. Uh, what attribute of your personality would allow you to have the success that you've had? Well, I think, uh, you know, I'm an emotional person and um, um, I cry at the drop of a hat, you know, <laughs> over some stupid thing that, that, that's emotional to me or, or sentimental to me. And so I think it's, uh, I have a lot of passion and, and I think wrestling is really, a, uh, I love the passion for, that the sport brings out in people. You know, and then that, there's just that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, no one to, you know, it's all on you. And you have to present yourself and perform all on your own right. with no other help from anybody else. So I think uh, the, you know, like you say, attribute, I think it's just, you know, I'm a passionate person and I think the, that's the part of the sport that, that really got me going with it. Mm. Your teams yeah. were always intense, so they probably picked that up from you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there one outstanding <clears throat> situation in the sport that you'll always remember that stands out above others? You know, that, I, I thought about that, that question, and, you know, there's so many uh, outstanding coaching memories mm -hmm. that it's really hard to, to single out. Uh, individuals or and when you've done it as long as I have and you have but I think one of the things I I'll always remember and I tried to bring this to my kids is when I was 
in college, I qualified for the Division II Nationals. It was at Cal Poly. And I went down there and I didn't really believe in myself. I didn't think I belonged there. I mean, I didn't really understand. I, you know, I'd won matches and I got second in the conference. And so we went down there and we're competing. And I was in this match with a guy from Mankato State. I don't even know his name, don't remember his name, but I know it was from, and I was just in awe of being in the tournament. And I was wondering, what am I doing here? And late in the uh, third period, it was one to nothing. And we were on our feet. And it finally hit me that I was on that level with that guy, that I belonged in the tournament. And I worked my butt off to try to score and I didn't. And I lost one to nothing. And so it's, it, it stuck with, and then that guy got beat a couple matches later, and so I didn't get carried in the tournament. And so that, right there, I thought about, you know, one thing I'm gonna try to instill in my kids when I start coaching is, you know, don't think that you don't belong. Don't, you know, don't sell yourself short, because I, I sold myself short. And it took me a while to come to grips with that, you know, but, but I finally did realize that it was, it was I just didn't believe in myself early enough in that match or I, I could have you know, possibly won the match. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's one of those defining moments that isn't so positive in some way, but it turned out Very positive, positive for, for down the way. Yeah, coach, for yeah. Sure. So I think that was something that helped me in my coaching, mm -hmm. for sure. When did you decide you wanted to coach the sport? Oh, gee, I, I was in a sophomore year of of school at Chabot College and I didn't wrestle in junior college. I didn't want to lose any more weight. I'd lost a lot of weight in, in high school and then I grew. And so I didn't really want to compete. I, I, I didn't think I could, again, I didn't think I could peak, compete because I was up three weight classes and I said, I can't compete at this level. And then I went into the classes and I did that. Well, as we got along, I decided I'm going to be a PE teacher and a coach. Uh, or I'm going to be a PE teacher. And I said, well, if I'm going to be a PE teacher, I got a coach. And so then when I decided to go to Chico to be a PE teacher, I said, you know, I got to go out for a sport if I'm going to be a, 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 a PE teacher. I really should be, you know, have some coaching or some knowledge of, of college athletics. I should go out for a sport. And well, wrestling was what I knew. So at that point, I decided I was going to be a, a PE teacher and I was going to eventually be a wrestling coach. And... That's how it turned out. But it wasn't until I was 19 years old, maybe 20, you know, in my, in my uh, early college career that I decided to do it. And uh, through, you know, <clears throat> probably 30 plus years, uh, yeah. at the end, you know, you've been out of coaching for a little while now. Would you have changed anything? Would you have done anything differently if you were to do it over again? <laughs> well, I, you know, that's kind of a... a you know, people think about the, oh, you have regrets. I mean, everybody has regrets and you would do some things differently. But I think if I was going to do anything differently, um, I would have gone out for uh, wrestling when I was in junior college, when I was in community college at Chabot. Um, we had a, a really good coach there named Bob Thompson, who was there right before Zach Papakristos. And Zach was actually coached at Canyon High School before he went there, which was, in, was our rival high school. And I coached, I, I wrestled against his team. So I knew the coaches and I liked them. Right. And it was like, uh, now when I think back, I said, if I could do anything different, I would have done that. I would have, I would have done that uh, for sure. And other than that, I think in my coaching career, um, golly, I think the only thing I would have done different is get smarter faster. <laughs> you know, learn more technique or, uh, at an earlier age. But you know, it, it just, it wasn't what I was doing. I was doing other things. I, you know, I, I coached football. Uh, and I wasn't ever a football player. I coached track in junior high because I did everything. And so I don't want to change that. Um, you know, that was, that was all part of my being and who I was. And so, uh, and I was really lucky to be able to start where I did in Georgetown where we had some kids that knew a little bit about wrestling and liked it. And I didn't, you know, and then I just took it and went with it and it, it worked out really well Absolutely. for me. So. What would you like people to remember about Ron Headland? I think that um, for me it wasn't about uh, the wins and losses as much as it was about developing the, 
the kid to learn the skills necessary to be successful in life. And I always felt, that's what I really loved about wrestling. I chose actually to coach wrestling because I felt, I love baseball, but I didn't actually feel like baseball taught the, the attitude and life skills as well as wrestling did. Baseball, you're always arguing with the ref. Um, it's always, you know, somebody's there, they're jawing with this, you're, hey, batter, batter, it's all that. There's a, and I love the sport and, and all that, but, but there was a lack of respect. And I didn't like, once I got into teaching, I, I really thought, you know, this sport really has it all in terms of what you can teach kids in terms of being a man and growing up to do the right thing. And so I think um, if, you know, in terms of what you want people to think, that's what I want people to think of, is that he wanted you to do the right thing no matter what. It was all about integrity and honesty and respect and all of those things. Uh, and not necessarily whether you win or lose, because the trophies, they go away. You know? uh, they certainly do, and you did a good job of the, of the part that you wanted to be remembered for, <laughs> from my opinion. Uh, once again, congratulations on being inducted in the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. It's a tremendous honor, and I appreciate it very much.